All right, and welcome back. We want to thank you so much for watching and we sure hope that you are enjoying the show. Uh, a big thank you to Jeff Morton, of course, to Carol Radul uh, for popping by this morning. So many of you um, on our social media platform saying, by the way, Carol Radul definitely needs to be appointed as the CS for Sports and Heritage. I couldn't agree more. Well, thank you so much for your feedback and we ask you to continue to keep them coming. Uh, remember, at k 2014 TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome to another edition, though, of Health and Wellness right here on K24 with me, Shiko Kaitani. Now, it may sound gross, but actually paying attention to your bowel movements is pretty important. And that's because your bowel habits are a strong indicator of your digestive health. Many of us actually do in a deal with digestion issues, but never know how to manage them. And so today we will be discussing some of these conditions, how you can improve your digestion and get this, what your poop says about you. Yes. Take another sip of your tea because <laughs> we're about to get deep into it. Uh, we are going to be welcoming today on the show our favorite nutritionist and fitness coach, Roseanne Kamau. She's going to be with us shortly. But for now, let's welcome Dr. Daval Mystery, who is a gastrointestinal surgeon from Medihill Hospital, Parklands. Hello, welcome, Shiko. Dr. Sorry. Thank you. Good to have you. It's been a minute since we had um, Medi Hill back in yes. studio. So welcome. Thank you um, a very interesting discussion. And you know, as we were even planning this, we really thought about how people don't really think about digestive health at yes. all. Yes, that's we, true. Yeah. Because I see people don't care about their uh, dietary habits mm -hmm. and they are not so careful about their bowel movements. So this keep ignoring what they what the, what the symptoms they are having mm -hmm. and they don't consult doctors as soon as possible mm. so most of the times we get the we get these patients in the later stage at that time it is difficult to manage their condition yes so if people are aware about their dietary habits and mm -hmm. bowel movements and if they consult their doctors earlier then it's easy for us to manage and it's yeah. better for patient them themselves. Yeah. Um, even just linking to what our topic title is um, in regards to our bowel habits and yes. why it's important to actually pay yes. attention, yes. Um, uh, why should we really be focusing or at least considering our bowel movements? <laughs> What's the importance of it? See, because health is ob obviously important yeah. and when your bowel movements are not regular, you're not digesting your food properly, you don't get energy itself. When you're in ill health, you're not able to perform your daily duties, your work uh, up to the mark. So it's good to be in the optimum health. Mm -hmm. Okay, Whenever you're in perfect health, you're able to give good to your work, good to your family. So that is why it is very important to take care about your bowel habits. Yes, okay. All right, um, in just a moment, I'm going to ask my director to actually put up an image of our digestive tract yes. so that you can actually see what we are talking about. Yes. But speaking about common diseases and conditions that you see every single day in your clinic, can you tell us the top three things that people are dealing with? Yes, the most common condition I'm seeing in my clinic is hemorrhoids. That is also known as piles in common language. Mm -hmm. The most common reason for this is constipation and constipation is hard stools or difficulty in passing stools yeah and uh, the most common reason there are lots of reasons for this but most common reason I find is the inadequate intake of the uh, water mm -hmm. and the lack of fibers in the diet mm -hmm. okay can we have a picture of uh, this what uh, ideal should diet yeah. plate should be okay I fine. can explain right. it better mm -hmm. with this Okay, we'll ask our director to put that up. In the meantime, yes, continue yeah. as they work on because, it. Because uh, fibers are very necessary to have the regular bowel movement because they uh, ma make up your uh, stools. Mm -hmm. They make it easy to pass through your colon. Yeah. So whenever you are having enough of fiber, you don't face any problem like constipation mm -hmm. or diarrhea sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so ideal plate should have half of the vegetables which mm -hmm. can which are rich in fibers yes okay obviously we need the uh, macronutrients like proteins carbohydrates fats but along with that mm -hmm. we also need vitamins and fibers okay so mm -hmm. an ideal mm -hmm. plate should be having uh, one uh, one half of the vegetables which are rich in fiber yes the one fourth should be your proteins that can be meat 
uh, white meat, uh, red meat, any anything you like. Yes. For vegans, it can be pulses like beans and mm. all. Mm. And for in terms of carbs, we can have one fourth of portion as carbs as rice mm -hmm. or as you people in Kenya eat ugali. Yes. Or you can have mashed potatoes mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yes. We actually don't add uh, fat in this uh, plate because whenever you try to cook something with oils and butter, it will give you adequate fats mm -hmm. also. So mm -hmm. there is no need to add fats uh, on the verge of it. Okay. Um, so um, I want to ask my director to actually put up the image of the plate um, that Dr. Tari is even talking about in regards to even seeing some of the mistakes that we make in terms of what we're yes. eating. So lack yes. of fiber um, in our diet and yes. lack of water. Yes. Okay. Definitely. All right. So as he's working on that, Dr. Yeah. Tari, what are the two common um, factors The second you see? most common we are seeing is IBS, that is known as irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. There are lots of causes of IBS and the symptoms would be patients are having alternated ha alternating habit of their yeah. uh, bowel movements. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are facing diarrhea, sometimes they are facing constipation. Yes. They feel discomfort after having food and mm -hmm. many a times they have to go to toilet to pass stools uh, within two to three hours of eating food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is multifactorial. Even stress can increase uh, yeah. IBS. Oh. And nowadays, people yeah. are lots, uh, lots of in stress because of the work pressure, family pressure, everything. Mm. So we need to reduce stress as well for IBS. Okay. And the third one is the colon cancer. Okay. So before you get to colon yeah. cancer, there you can yeah. actually see there's this the is, image. Yeah. This is what I was talking about. Yeah. It is termed as Mediterranean diet uh, mm -hmm. plate. Uh, is full half yes. the half of the plate is full of your vegetables which are rich in uh, mic micronutrients that mm -hmm. are with vitamins yeah. and also in fibers the one fourth portion uh, you are seeing is the carbohydrates you can see those macronis yes. those macronis are not that healthy yeah. but just to example uh, just to give an example macronis whatever is carb like mm -hmm. wheat rice uh, ugali corn yeah. these all things are carbs yeah and okay the let's point right here uh huh yeah Mm -hmm. And the lower uh, right corner yeah. is your meat mm -hmm. that gives you protein. For mm -hmm. vegans, it can be pulses, tofu, paneer. Right. They can take that as yes. well. Yes, <laughs> paneer. Uh -huh. So fantastic. So what you're saying is that half our plate ideally should be vegetables. Should be vegetables. Yes. And what do we see? It's usually the other two which yes. take larger. Most, yes. Most yeah. of the time I see it's full of carbs, proteins and lots of fats as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. But we are ignoring vegetables. We're ignoring vegetables. Yes. Okay. Uh, so it's so funny because if we take the necessary steps, we wouldn't even have to be in your office yes, telling you this. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> okay, so you talked a little bit about colon cancer. Yeah. Very serious. So are we seeing yeah. um, rising cases in yeah. colon cancer? Yes, it is It is on rising trend. Mm. Th though it is not as common as the hemorrhoids, constipation or IBS, but mm -hmm. we should not be ignoring because these hemorrhoids, constipation, IBS, they are not life-threatening conditions. Right. Why colon cancer is a life-threatening condition. Mm -hmm. So we need to be vigilant uh, to identify it as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The symptoms of colon cancers are also uh, changing in dietary uh, bowel movement, I'm yeah. sorry, bowel movement. Yes. Sometimes you're also having bleeding from your anus along with stools. Mm -hmm. So we have to be vigilant about and it. And do they, do the symptoms kind of mimic those of IBS? Because yes, you yes, most of them. As yeah. I said, in IBS also you have changing pattern of your bowel movement. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have diarrhea, sometimes you have constipation. Right. While in colon cancer also you're having same uh, problems. Mm -hmm. Only thing uh, differentiating between IBS and colon cancer is bleeding. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But bleeding can as uh, can be there in hemorrhoids as well. Mm, okay, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. from IB, it the all three uh, diseases yeah. are having overlapping symptoms. Okay, so you have to go through clinical examination, certain investigations mm -hmm. to identify which condition you are having and manage it accordingly. Okay, uh, remember we do have our lines open, and of course, if you want to contribute to our social media platforms, you can. Daktari is in studio, like I mentioned, Rosanne Kamau, our nutritionist, is going to be in studio as well. Uh, please go ahead, call in, shoot your questions to us, and let's see what we can do for you this morning. I will ask my director to put up the image on the screen of our um, digestive tracts so that even Daktari can take us through that in just a second. But even as he's putting that up for us, uh, Doc, um, when we talk about managing IBS, yes. um, lots of people actually have this condition but yes. aren't too sure about how to go about it. Is there yes. a specific way one should be managing it? 
See, first of all, you need patience when managing IBS. Yeah. Because it is a multifactorial condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And IBS is a diagnosis of exclusion. Yeah. Okay. So you have to exclude other pathologies of your mm -hmm. gastrointestinal tract and bowel movements. So you have to go through mm -hmm. stool examination. You have to go through radiological images in form of ultrasounds or yeah. CT scans sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you also have to undergo endoscopy and colonoscopy as well. Right. That is inserting camera through your mouth and mm -hmm. your anus. Mm -hmm. So we examine your upper GI tract and lower GI tract. Right. When you rule out all other things and have this, these symptoms, then we can term patient is having IBS. Uh -huh. And after diagnosing it as IBS, yeah. we have to make certain dietary changes. We mm -hmm. also have to reduce stress for the patient. We yeah. have to go into the uh, personal history of the patient, whether he is under stress or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So some measures for decreasing stress like uh, doing yoga or some form of exercise will mm -hmm. also reduce our stress. There are some trigger food which will also give you symptoms in IBS. Mm -hmm. All the patients have different uh, triggering foods. Mm -hmm. So we have to identify what is triggering symptoms of IBS in these patients. Yes. So we have to find out how to avoid them, reduce stress. And if all these measures don't work, then yeah. we have some medications to help them out with it. Okay. All right. So let's see um, that image right about now. And um, Dr. you can even take us through and talk about the digestive yeah, tract sure. where it starts from. And, you know, what are we talking it's, about? Which organs are involved <laughs> yeah. as we, we move on? Okay. Uh, so does my director have that image ready? Not this one. Yeah, this one. Okay. All right. So there we go. Uh, we've got that image you can see on your screen. Maybe if we can just move up a little bit so we can see the top of it yeah. um, and come all the way down. Thank you so much for that. I can see our team in digital working very hard on yeah. that. Okay. So um, when we talk about the digestive tract, it, you can see it's yes. starting all the way from? It actually starts from your mouth. So itself. digestion begins in the mouth. Yes, okay. exactly. Because even teeth are part of your digestive system because you have to oh. chew your teeth. <laughs> yeah. If you don't chew it, it, it's difficult to digest your food. Yes. So it starts right from your teeth, tongue. Mm -hmm. There are saliva in your salivary glands, which are not shown in here. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you chew your food, you secrete your saliva, which yes. contains uh, amylase enzymes. So the digestion of your carbohydrates ra starts right from your mouth. Okay. It doesn't digest it all, but it actually starts with that. All right. So I understand we've got a caller on the line. Hello, yeah. Paul. Good morning. Yes, how are you? Fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have a question or a comment today? Yeah, I have a question. Eh? Yes. I have a question uh, to the doctor. Okay. Yeah, first uh, I congratulate uh, Shiko. Mm -hmm, thank you. And uh, the other thing is, uh, this, I have a question to the doctor, yeah? Yes. According to hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Uh -huh. Hemorrhoids, yeah. okay. He yeah. yeah, hemorrhoids. I'm asking about, uh, you know, sometimes the hemorrhoids can be inner or outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes when you you use your tissue, you can you can touch a little bit of a small, like small. Can yeah. those be hemorrhoids or... Uh, can be other things. So when you touch uh, about about the part of the the leg, some uh, some uh, protrudings <coughs> can be they can be the uh, hemorrhoids or uh, other things. Okay, um, we seem to have lost Paul there, but because his call is not too clear. But yeah. uh, you've generally got what he was saying about hemorrhoids. Yeah, I um, didn't understand what he was trying to ask. Okay, okay, but in regards to hemorrhoids. Again, maybe you can you can actually go back, take us to what causes it, because yeah. that seems to be his issue. Because see, there are some hemorrhoidal vein, veins in your anus. Yeah. Okay. So that actually supplies blood to the anus. Every organ re requires blood uh, mm -hmm. to live on. So whenever you are passing hard stools, those blood vessels get eroded. Yeah. Okay. So hard stools will erode blood vessels, and then bleeding comes out through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the key to prevent hemorrhoids is having soft stools, regular yeah. bowel movements. Uh -huh. For that, you have to take lots of water and fiber as we discussed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But whenever you have hemorrhoids, mm -hmm. we can uh, help patients out with uh, some kind of stool softness. So their stools are soft. Yeah. Okay. And there are actually gradings of hemorrhoids. So mm -hmm. we can help them out with uh, these dietary changes if yeah. they are into grade one or two. But mm -hmm. when they are in grade three or four, then surgery is the only solution for hemorrhoids. Oh, we have wow. to actually remove yeah. those hemorrhoidal veins. Okay. All right. Um, let's continue, even as those calls are coming through, uh, to continue discussing our digestive tract. If our director can actually put that back up. 
on our screen. Uh, so you talked about how the teeth are actually part of our digestive system exactly. that we don't even really um, yes, think about. Because yeah. first you have to chew your food to digest it. Okay. okay. All right. So number two, you can see the stomach is yeah. part it of it. Yeah. It passes through the esophagus. That is a food pipe. We yes. show, and that then it goes to the stomach. Stomach mm -hmm. stores the food. It assimilates it, secretes some acid inside it because acid is also necessary for activation of some enzymes like pepsinogen, mm -hmm. which will digest your protein. Yeah. So the digestion of your uh, carbs will start into your mouth, mm -hmm. digestion of your protein will start into your stomach. Okay. And it is also necessary to absorb some vitamins like vitamin B12, mm -hmm. there are some factors inside All it. Right. Then we can move on lower down. Lower down? Mm -hmm. There you go. You see their liver, gallbladder and pancreas. Yeah. They are the organs that will secrete enzymes for digestion of the food. Mm -hmm. Okay. From stomach, food will enter into the intestine and meanwhile the bile produced by liver and gallbladder system and the pancreatic juice produced by pancreas will mix up with the food. Yes. Okay. This bile is necessary to prepare food for digestion of your fats mm -hmm. and the pancreas will secrete enzymes like called lipase yes. that will digest your food. Mm -hmm. But it, they are getting mixed up in the initial part of intestine but the actual absorption mm. will take in the lowermost part of the small intestine. Yes. Okay. 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 So at this moment, all of your uh, food is in liquid or semi-liquid mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. Okay. As it's absorbed. Yeah. Okay. While it is getting absorbed. Yeah. All right, uh, Dr. Terry, let me stop you there. As yeah. we get back to the um, tract, we do have Winnie, um, who is on the line from right here in Nairobi. Yes, Winnie. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. I have a question for Dr. Tari. Okay. Um, can we get the volume up slightly just so that we can hear Winnie clearly? Winnie, please speak up as well. Okay. Uh, I have a question for Dr. Tari. Yes, go yes. ahead. I, I, I gave birth to my child preterm at 29 weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, after two weeks, he, had the, he developed some problems with the boil's movement and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then... Uh, Tumwe kaanza kufura and we went to KNH. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, yes. the boil the boil movements were okay, mm -hmm. but now the tummy haikurudi. Every time we go for 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 the for scans, every time we see okay, we've been going to to another pediatrician to, yeah. to another pediatrician to nambiwa akona tugas akona tugas, but uh, the tummy is a bit akona a bit of tummy. Yes. Uh, Eco extended kidogo. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know coming in a kwani hidana digestion amanini, but every time we go for scans, yes. na andua, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Akona a bit of gas. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for that, Winnie. Um, so here we have a case. Uh, mother took her child to hospital, um, had a problem with their bowel movements, um, extended stomach, uh, yeah. and of course, a bit of swelling. Okay. And what she's saying is that right now he seems to be okay, but the swelling around his stomach hasn't gone down. Uh, but all she just keeps hearing is, oh, he's gassy, he's gassy, he's gassy, nothing more to worry about. Okay. The first of all, uh she needs to be a little specific what the swelling is. It is localized or generalized? Because yeah. when it is generalized, more likely the kid is having gas. And there are lots of food which will give you gas. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like cabbage, beans. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are, uh, cannot tolerate some, um, some food. Yeah. There is also possibility of lactose intolerance in this patient. Because, oh, okay. yeah, because uh -huh. some kids do not tolerate milk. The yeah. lactose in milk, they cannot tolerate. Mm -hmm. So whenever they eat any food which, uh, which is not suitable for them they're mm -hmm. having some gas troubles and they'll have a generalized swelling okay but uh, so your advice to winnie is that she needs to be more aware of what she's feeding her child because yes, perhaps it exactly. is the food uh, she needs uh, to maintain a diary whenever she is giving food to her child she needs to note down what she is giving and mm -hmm. whenever the kid is having problem she needs to go back and look what food has caused trouble to his her child okay all right okay. uh pauline is on the line for i understand from nairobi Yes, good okay. morning. Okay, good morning, Pauline. How are you? I'm fine. Can I ask my director to turn up the volume a little bit? Yes. Yes, okay. okay. Go ahead, Pauline. Now, my problem is um, I'm six weeks pregnant. Yes. Uh, this is with Dakari. And um, I, I'm always, my, my, I, I'm, I've always had this problem of uh, bloating. 
I'm always nafura. Kusikia kufura tumbo. I wanted to know what the problem could be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Pauline. Did you hear her question there? Uh, she's having bloating a lot. Yes, yeah. yes. And she's six weeks pregnant. Um, okay. Quite common? Yeah, it is very common. Yeah. Uh, bloating is very common in pregnancy. So yeah. it's a physiologic term. You yeah. really don't need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. You just need to go for ultrasound if, to rule out other co possible causes. But it is very common. So you mm -hmm. just have to bear with it. And once pregnancy is uh, yeah. finished, then she'll f be feeling better. Okay. All right. So very quickly, I want us to go back to our digestive track um, yeah. maybe you can say one two things because we need to talk yeah. a little bit about bowel movements if we have yeah, that sure. image up on our screen um, uh, when we actually talk about what a regular bowel movement yeah. is uh, Daktari um, what are we talking about in terms of frequency yes. what is considered healthy and regular yes. but um, can we ask our uh, team to actually scroll up slightly so that now we can actually look at the lower part of the digestive tract a yeah. little bit more let's keep going and I yeah. think there we are a little yeah. bit more. We've talked about the pancreas and the gallbladder. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the small and the large intestine there. Yes. And then it actually leads down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you saw appendix, yes. the large bowel starts right up, uh, from the appendix. Mm -hmm. From there, there is the large mm -hmm. intestine. Now your liquid food will enter into the large intestine mm -hmm. that is also known as colon in simple terms yeah okay so the function of colon is to store the food and absorb the excess of water from it yeah okay and it will make you uh, give you the semi-solid consistency of your mm -hmm. uh, stools and also it gives the color by digestion of your bile acids yeah the brown color which are we having normally mm -hmm. okay so after that, it takes around uh, 12 to 16 hours for food to pass up to the colon and, and travels to the ent entire yeah. colon. So as I pointed out that uh, when you're having less amount of water, the colon, your colon is actually absorbing water from your food. So mm -hmm. if you drink less amount of water, it will be harder than the it should be. It should mm -hmm. be semi-solid consistency. Mm -hmm. And after the, the semi-solid consistency of colon, we pass the normal stool mm -hmm, through anus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when is it considered not normal see, um, in terms of our movements? Yeah, so that we see. know what, what timings we're looking at and if there's a problem. See, every person is different. So the accepted uh, normal frequency is once in three days up and up to the three times a day. So if a person is passing three uh, stools three times a day, that can be considered normal. Mm -hmm. And if someone is passing stools once in three days, that can also be considered normal. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, in terms of frequency, it is abnormal and you should seek your doctor. Yeah. But there are other definitions of constipation as well. Yeah. It, based, it is based on consistency. The mm -hmm. normal consistency should be the semi-solid one. Yeah. If you are having harder consist, consi uh, consistency, then yeah. it can be termed as constipation. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, there's actually a stool chart that yeah. we have for you so that you can actually pay attention to the appearance and the color of it. We'll be looking at that in just a bit. But for now, I understand Maria from Nakuru is on the line. Good morning, Maria. Hello. Hello. Karibu sana. Okay, I'm going to 24. Yes. I'm going to ask you, Dr. I'm going to program in the end of the day, and I'm going to ask you, 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 okay, so you said, you said, you said, you said, you said, Ya kufura? Mhm. Mm Tumbo inauma? Mhm. Mm Alafu kienda cho naumia. Okay, okay. Asante sana for that. Esther from Nairobi, yes, good morning. Morning. Yes. I want to ask the doctor a question. The okay, doctor go ahead. Is on, uh, my question is, Yes. when uh, I miss a meal, like lunch, Mhm. Mm uh, I usually get problems with my bowel emptying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gives me problems. Maybe I, I may not go to the washroom maybe uh, uh, for the rest, for the, two, for the two days that will be following. Yes. And I'll be feeling very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's Thank my you. problem. Thank you so much, Esther. Okay, um, so the previous caller yeah. was in Swahili, and what she was simply saying, Doc, is that she has a lot of pain 
um, in her tummy and at the same time she's experiencing a lot of swelling so I'm guessing that is bloating yeah um, in her case is it still a dietary issue uh, no. because you've got someone who's got frequent yes. pain yes yeah uh, this can be gastritis as well because mm -hmm. sometimes patients are secreting excessive acid from their stomach mm. that is known as gastritis yeah that might be giving her pain as well the she might be having gallbladder stones as well whenever yes. you are having a stones in gall because if you eat lots of fatty food or sometimes because of no reason your gallbladder develop some stone right so those stones can be giving her this problem as well so okay. we really need to check her with endoscopy and ultrasound and then we can decide what sh she is having and yeah. manage accordingly okay esther on the other hand talks about when she misses meals yeah. um she doesn't seem to have frequent bowel movements and still at the same time she's very uncomfortable um yet again still back to yeah. what yeah, these are known as hunger contractions. So yeah. because when you are hungry, your bowel will move a lot. So that can give you crampy pain as well. Okay. And it's common because you're missing a meal, you're also missing some first form of water and uh, fibers. So you might be missing mm -hmm. your stools as well. Mm -hmm. But as long as it is of normal consistency and once in a three days, I think it's normal. Okay. All right. Uh, keep your questions coming. Remember, our lines are open for you. And of course, on our social media platforms, we're definitely looking out for you. We are talking about bowel movement and digestive health. Yes, we said it might be gross but it's definitely a conversation that needs to be had at k24 tv instagram facebook and twitter and of course you can catch me at shiko kaitani as well keep it k24 because there's more to come including what your poop says about you and of course some of the foods that can actually encourage or improve your digestion all that is coming up right here on k24